This video will deal with the <clears throat> origin of the human races and the scientific evidence that would indicate where the races developed from, what the reason was for the development of the races. This is the final video in this series of videos that are dealing with questions in Genesis other than the biblical creation in Genesis chapter 1. We're at the final stage here where we'll look at where do the different human races come from. And there is a scientific explanation about that that we will see shortly. The final video that you will see after this will be the final conclusion video, which will in more detail present the conclusions that you've seen throughout uh, these various videos if you have watched uh, them. Now, human races have uh, been developed on Earth with basically different skin color, different ancestry, uh, different physical appearance, and we have that term, that ethnicity. And there are also factors of uh, DNA. Now, humans essentially have, all humans, no matter what race, essentially have the same DNA. So there is no dramatic difference in the human races on Earth with their DNA. There are slight variations as with all other humans on Earth, uh, which gives us the uniqueness of the DNA measure that I'm sure you've all heard about. Now, there are two explanations for this, one coming from the Bible and one coming through evolution theory. The biblical explanation deals with the time after the flood of Noah, when basically all of humanity except Noah and his, and his immediate family were wiped off the face of the earth. And after the time of Noah, human population again flourished with a lot of different uh, humans uh, dealing with uh, different problems throughout. And it reached the point again where there was a, a difficult problem with humans not following the, the rules that were set up by God. At that particular point, the humans built a tower to Babel, so-called, a tower that would reach to heaven. They had the idea that they could become uh, deity themselves and reach all the way to heaven. They built this tower, and God finally said, okay, this isn't working, and he decided to disperse the humans throughout the locations of the earth. He had made a promise to Noah and before the flood that he would never again send a flood to wipe out all of humanity. He would find other means, and this was the other means. <clears throat> he dispersed the humans, various tribes and various groups of humans to other parts of the surface of the earth and gave them new languages. This became a, a term of babbling or an English term to babble which related to the fact that people of different languages, if they didn't know the, someone else's language, could not understand them, and they thought, said that they were speaking or babbling to them. Now, evolution has a different explanation for this, and it's more of a mechanical one, and it says that uh, initially all of humanity were on the African continent, and at some particular time, a rift developed on the continental African surface, such as a, an earthquake or volcanic eruptions that caused a change in the climate in Africa, which led to severe drought. And this forced the humans to migrate to different places, and they adapted and mutated to uh, deal better with their situation on different parts, different climates, different temperatures, and different uh, altitudes and mountains and that sort of thing. But basically, they, they were dispersed because of a, a thing that happened on Earth that caused them to need to go to some other place to survive. Now, the explanation in the scientific world uh, has been around for quite a number of years since the, the 50s and uh, based upon the discovery back in 1923 related to vitamin D. Now, there was a discovery made by a professor who was working in the food sciences area, actually at the University of Wisconsin, and he was studying rat food for some reason. Now, in the technical paper that was published covering this area, there is no explanation for why this professor was studying rat food and uh, nothing in the papers that I could find on the Internet. But the only thing I can come up with is that he was studying rat food for feeding rats uh, that were used in the laboratory, as opposed to developing a better food for uh, feral rats or, or rats that are, are uh, out in society unkempt. So basically, he studied rat food. And what he discovered was that when he, the food that he was feeding these rats uh, when he irradiated it with ultra ultraviolet radiation, that these rats were a lot healthier. 
In fact, there was a problem with some of the rats, some of the young rats that were very easily breaking their bones and not being able to be used for the studies that they were uh, intended. And he found that when this ultraviolet radiated food was fit, that even these rats, that their bones became stronger and did not break. <clears throat> and what he had ultimately discovered, was found out later, was vitamin D. Vitamin D, which is generated by ultraviolet radiation, uh, was the source of the benefit that, re that uh, he derived for better rat food. Now, since then, it has been known that we need vitamin D in our body, and we need just exactly the right amount of vitamin D to be healthy and to have all of our bodily parts work just the right way. We need the right amount of vitamin D in, uh, to be available to us. And it was found uh, subsequent to 1923 in the late 20s and the early 30s that there was a problem with black children mainly who moved from Africa to the higher latitudes and the families reside in these higher latitudes that there was a problem with the uh, their bones breaking. Young children were having their bones break and it was attributed to a disease which is known as rickets. They were not getting enough vitamin D, their bones were not maintaining their strength, and they were breaking their bones. On the opposite side of the coin, if someone gets too much vitamin D, it is known that the vitamin D not only helps your body process calcium that you take in in food and therefore uh, promote the uh, well-being of your bones, the vitamin D also is used in the various organs in the body from the kidneys and liver and others so as to make some chemicals that are necessary, very necessary for the well-functioning of those organs. So too little vitamin D can cause a problem and too much can cause a problem and even death as well. So when this was discovered in the late 30s, it was discovered that this was a, a right amount was needed and from about 1938 onward, vitamin D was manufactured and added to uh, milk. It is manufactured basically in each individual's body and we'll see in a few slides the, the mechanism whereby ultraviolet rays enter the impinge upon your skin, get to some of the lower skin layers and manufacture vitamin D. But if vitamin D, amount of vitamin D that you manufacture from exposure to sunlight is not enough, it is, needs to be augmented by uh, eating very special foods. In particular, as a result of this 1923 work and in the early 30s, it was discovered that one needs to add additional vitamin D and it was added to the milk supply for the benefit of young children, in particular the young of black children, so that they would not be subject to rickets. And it, ever since that day, vitamin D has been fortified and added to milk to, to maintain that. And rickets basically has disappeared from the bulk of the world through that knowledge and through that addition of vitamin D to milk. Now, with this vitamin D that is manufactured in the lower skin layers of every uh, human body, it is very important, therefore, what the skin color is in the upper layers, what the pigment color is in the upper layers of the skin cells, such that it controls the amount of ultraviolet light that gets down to the vitamin D manufacturing layers. And we'll see that in a, in a few moments. Now, the technical concept here is that the races are the result of humans adapting to different quantities of sunlight that are available in different parts of the earth, uh, developing lighter skin at the higher latitudes and maintaining their dark skin at the lower uh, latitudes, such as at the equator. Uh, you all know that if you spend a lot of time, no matter where you live, if you spend a large amount of time out in the sun, your skin will basically tan or turn brown. And the mechanical reason for that is that outer layer of skin turning brown prevents too much vitamin D being generated in your body, which can cause you an unhealthy situation. But let's get into a little more detail on this. This is a situation vitamin D and the quantity is available in individual bodies can be an explanation for the different races that have developed on Earth. Now here we're looking at, on the right-hand side first, a a set of four layers, outer layers of the skin of a human being. And these outer layers have different names from, as you can see written here, and the first two layers are the layers that contain the pigment of the skin and determine whether someone is dark or light skin. This particular drawing is for someone who has very dark skin, one of the races with very dark skin. What happens is that 
ultraviolet right, light that is incident on the surface of the skin, the bulk of it with dark skin is absorbed in these first two layers and no vitamin D is manufactured in this person's body with the bulk of the sunlight that's coming in. Only about 20% gets down to these two lower layers, the spinosum and the basale, that generate the vitamin D in this person's body. But that 20% is enough if that person is living in a high sunlight area. And what we're seeing on the left-hand side here is the annual amount of sunlight that impinges upon the surface of the Earth at various locations, ranging from the North Pole to the equator where Nairobi, Kenya basically resides. So a person in the North, at, or in, in Nairobi, Kenya, at the equator has about four times as much sunlight impinging upon them as a person at the North Pole. With that much sunlight impinging on a person's body, it is very important that they have dark skin or cover their skin or use protective clothing or some other means not to have too much uh, vitamin D generated in their body. It's a natural thing for a dark skinned person to be able to tolerate so much sunlight and generate only about 20% of the vitamin D as a result of the impingement of all of that sunlight onto the skin. So that's the first situation, a dark skinned person living in a lower latitude where there's very much sunlight. Dark skin protects that person from generating too much vitamin D. Let's look at the opposite extreme here. They've got the same sort of a plot here with the same four skin layers. In this case, the upper skin layers reflect that of a light skinned person, perhaps a white person. That light skinned person has not impeded the in incidence of sunlight very much, and in this case, uh, 60 percent, 6 out of 10 of those sunlight rays get through to the layers that generate the vitamin D, and this much vitamin D is manufactured, 60 percent uh, utility rate there. And if that person happens to be living at the North Pole with only having about one-fourth of the sunlight, that's the one headed Nairobi, Kenya, it's very important to get, in this case, the numbers work out to about three times as much vitamin D generated in the body as a person uh, living at Nairobi, Kenya, with the amount of sunlight that's available at the North uh, Pole. So in any event, those are the two examples, and, and all the various locations on Earth are in between those two extremes with uh, the various races living at given latitudes getting just the right amount of sunlight. Now, there's in interestingly, there is one group of uh, one race that lives unusually, at, predominantly, at a high latitude, and still, though they are dark-skinned, get just enough or get plenty of vitamin D in their bodies. And those I'm referring to are the Eskimos. They live in the upper latitudes in the Arctic, close to the equator. And uh, the typical picture we have is they're generally sitting there in the cold weather and have all kinds of cold weather clothing on to protect them from the uh, extreme cold. But that further eliminates any possibility of getting a lot of sunlight. The other thing that they have going against them is they're somewhere toward the North Pole and they have very little sunlight coming in anywhere. Yet this group of dark-skinned people, the Eskimos, are very healthy in terms of vitamin D content in their bodies. The reason for that is that they consume quite a bit of fish oil. And you'll see in the uh, final view graph here that fish oil is very beneficial, has lots of vitamin D, and they just happen to consume a lot of it and therefore achieve their vitamin D content in their body from what they take in in food and fish oil and other similar substances from the sea, uh, but do not get it from the manufacturer in their body by this incident sunlight. So that's just an interesting sidelight to this, showing that it's all consistent, that basically the races are the result of living in different places with different amounts of sunlight and their body, bodily uh, characteristics either adapting naturally from what is available to them to develop preferentially light skin or having mutations that result in light skin. Either one would be beneficial. Now let's just look at the conclusions here of what we have concluded. Uh, by this brief look at vitamin D, uh, first of all, the amount of vitamin D in the body determines the overall health, and it's got to be within an acceptable range. Can't have too much, can't have too little. Too little, and you have problems like rickets with weak bones that would break very easily. And in fact, I didn't mention earlier that some of the elderly who don't get outside very much and don't get very much sun can't generate very much vitamin D when, within their bodies, 
and uh, if, if they perchance do not take vitamin D and other means, they too can have brittle bones with osteoporosis and that sort of thing being a possible cause of not having enough vitamin D in their bodies. So that's the, the primary thing. We just have to have the right amount and our ra the races on earth have attuned themselves to their living locations and their skin colors so that it all fits together to have a healthy life. And so when humans migrated to different places on the globe, they adapted and perhaps there were some DNA mutations that maximized their wellness at the new location. It's just a, a capability that it was in with, is within human DNA and mutations that are beneficial to result in that overall wellness in whatever location they live. Now, uh, I did mention that uh, there are some other sources of vitamin D, and fish oil is the predominant one that the Eskimos uh, have plenty of. We can take vitamins that have vitamin D. That if we don't get overload too much on that, it's a good thing. And similarly, sun lamps and artificial sun is another reason, how, another way that we can get ultraviolet light in our bodies to generate enough vitamin D to maintain our health. In any event, that concludes this series of videos that are related to areas outside of the chapter one of Genesis, which is the six days of creation. And I hope that having, having looked at these, you will have a, a, a feeling that all of these areas, and really there are additional areas within Genesis that may seem uh, unbelievable to you, but have good scientific backing, good scientific support that they likely did happen.